Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be showing that some horrible mess of a function, in this case that's this really ugly looking inequality here, is in big theta of some much nicer function, n to the 1.5. Why might we have come up with n to the 1.5? Well let's quickly glance at this. We look for the most important term, the one that's going to dominate the growth rate the most. That would be the thing that grows the quickest. And in this case we might go, ah, I see a 6n cubed there and it's inside of a square root. The square root of 6n cubed is something like the square root of 6 n to the 1.5, and that looks a lot like n to the 1.5. So that's our reasoning behind this. Why are we starting with big theta and not big O? Well, that's because in order to show big theta, we're gonna show big O and big omega along the way. So, let us begin by bounding it above, and we're going to do that by showing 6n cubed plus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5. That horrible mess of a function is going to be in big O of n to the 1.5. That's one of the steps we need to show. We need to also show that that, that same function is in big omega of n to the 1.5. So let's zoom in here so we get, can write a little bit neater. We want to try and make this look like some constant times n to the 1.5, that is our goal. So if I could make every single thing in that expression look like n cubed, maybe that would help. What do I mean by that? Well, let's try and write this down. This term, 7n squared, that's definitely less than or equal to 7n cubed. 3n, that's definitely less than or equal to 3n cubed. And five, well, that's definitely less than or equal to 5n cubed. I've made every single non-n cubed term look like n cubed. Some of those things might not always be true. We'll need to address that in a second, but we will come back to that once we figure out some details. So let's apply that. That original function, let's write that a little neater, radical, 6n squared plus 7, oh sorry, 6n cubed. plus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 is less than or equal to radical. Replace all of the things with what I claimed above written in purple. We have 6n cubed plus 7n cubed plus 3n cubed plus 5n cubed. Let's group together all of our like terms. Notice I'm using an equal sign here because I'm no longer replacing things with things that are larger. The thing on the right hand side of my inequality there is in fact equal to what I will write on the next line. So this is radical. Six plus seven plus three plus five, that's going to be 21 n cubed. And for completeness' sake, I've yet to show exactly what I need for my definition, so let's get there. I can split up inequalities, and I could write this as radical 21. Sorry, I can split up square roots, not inequalities. I can split this up as radical 21 times radical n cubed, which is n to the 1.5. So I have some constant c here. Notice that's not an integer or anything, that's just some ugly messy number, that's totally fine. And now I need to figure out what is that value of n naught. At what point is this true? One way could be if you plugged in various values of n and tried to see what happens. Or we can look at all of the claims we made and find out when are they true. So let's do these one by one. The first claim about n squared and n cubed there, that's always true. Plug in n equals zero, we get zero less than or equal to zero, that's fine. Then we get seven less than or equal to seven, and then n cubed grows faster, so that, that seems okay. Similarly for the three n and the three n cubed, but for the last one, five is not less than or equal to zero, but five is less than or equal to five. So this last comment here, well the five and the five n cubed is only true once n is greater than or equal to one. So, we have a n naught of 1 
because that last part is not always true. Now, that shows us that we are in big O of n to the 1.5. We now must show that we're also in big omega of n to the 1.5. So let's do that. We want to show that radical 6n cubed 7n squared plus 3n plus 5. Now, let's see what we can do here. What we want to do is show that this is in big omega of n to the 1.5. So I want to make it smaller, I want to bound it below, and make it look like n to the 1.5. This actually turns out to be really easy if you're clever about what you're doing, and we lose this trick several times when doing anything with inequalities. Which is, anything that's positive, I can just drop and it makes it smaller. So this actually takes very little work. The original square root, 6n cubed plus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 is greater than or equal to. Drop everything that's positive and doesn't look like our desired function. Hey, that's everything else. So I'm going to drop all of those trailing terms there. And I'll be left with radical 6n cubed. And I can rewrite that as radical 6 times n to the 1.5. So as I saw before, this radical 6 is going to be my c. And there is no condition that I need to enforce for that to be true. Every single thing there was positive or zero for all values of n. So by dropping them, it is always true that I made this smaller. So the r value of n naught is the smallest natural number. Which, depending on who you ask, you get different answers, but I claim that the smallest natural number is zero, so that's what we're using. Now we've shown it's in big O and it's in big omega, therefore it must be in big theta. So, the original, 6n cubed plus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 must be in theta of n to the 1.5. If we wanted to morph this to show the exact definition of theta, we could make some minor adjustments, which I will comment on here. I could have called this c1, and I could have called this thing here c2, and then chose in the largest value, the maximum between the n naughts that I found. So I could choose n naught equals 1, and c1 equals radical 6, and c2 equals radical 21. That would be directly from the definition, but as we already mentioned, showing it is in big O and it is in big omega is sufficient to show that it is in big theta.